What's going on, everybody? It is uh, another episode of Let There Be Talk. What's the date today? May twentieth, the Monday. How are you guys? I am. Uh, I'm sick. Good old fashioned sick. Not COVID. Not the uh, flu. Just full on head cold. And uh, it's been a long time since I've had that, which is wild because. It came on like Friday. I thought it was allergies. And so I was out doing shows and I still thought it was allergies Saturday. And then uh, I was doing four shows Saturday night. And by the fourth one at the comedy store, I was, I didn't think my voice was going to make it through. Completely shot. And uh, that's why I didn't record the podcast yesterday. And I'm barely able to do it right now. Yeah. What is this? Uh, May got a cold. Summer cold. I love those people. The uh, conspiracy theorists. Yeah, I love, I love reading those. Just, what happened to the flu? After COVID, you never heard about the flu again. <laughs> I don't know, man, but this is, uh, it's been a long time since I've been uh, sick since, uh, what, 2019 or 20 when I had COVID. That was the last time I got sick. It's funny. I, uh, busted out some, uh, COVID testers. I had laying around, see if I had COVID and, uh, they were expired 2022. It <laughs> just sitting on the shelf. Just imagine all those old COVID tests floating out in the ocean right now. The plastic and the fucking the the thing twirl around your nose. I was getting flashbacks yesterday. The original COVID test that I got. I remember me and my buddy, we had to get COVID tests to go do some shows. And uh the woman came over to the house. And remember the original COVID test? They'd fucking stick that thing all the way up and basically poke your fucking brain and eyeball. You're like, oh, what the fuck? What was that about? Nobody talks about that. Just the original fucking, it's got to be all the way up in your goddamn, it's got to tickle your fucking brain and your eye. And and then when the home test came out, it's all, yeah, just a, uh, Wiggle it around your fucking nostril area there. And uh, I don't know. It just all came back to me yesterday. I was just kind of like, what a weird time. Yeah, that's right, man. They fucking took our rights and they fucking locked us down, you fucking dummies. <laughs> anyway, I'm here. I'm sick. I'm going to try to get through it for you guys with the fucking froggy voice. Remember that guy Froggy on Little Rascals? Oh my God, what a. Hey, Alfalfa. Hey, uh, I can't even. Alfalfa. Ah, I don't know. He had the fucking. That was a crazy character. Some of you are probably like way younger and you're like, what the fuck is a Froggy? It was a dude on the Little Rascals and he had just the fucking worst voice. It's funny when I was finishing the fourth show on Saturday. I was just in full Steve-O mode. No, yeah, gaga. <laughs> oh, my God. I've always had this fucking uh, kind of dirty, scratchy voice, but when I get sick, it gets, like, really pre prevalent. Prevalent. There's a big word for it, Delray. It gets real prevalent. <laughs> anyway, here I am. Uh, had plenty of time to uh, just kind of internet it over the weekend. Yesterday, I kind of uh, sat around the house with Gertie. Gertie's sleeping over there. She's she's perfect, perfect partner when you're sick. She's just like, I'm here. But um, I dove down the rabbit hole. ACDC started their tour in Europe. Let me get this here for you guys. Um, here it is. They played in uh, Germany in uh, Gelsenkirchen. 
Gelsen Kirken. I, I'm probably saying that wrong, but I can imagine Brian saying, Hey, uh, how you doing, me, mate? Gelsen Kirken. Uh, Velton's Arena. They're playing there two nights. Um, they have about five to six days off in between each uh, show, which is wise. Now, if you are a fan of the podcast, you know that I saw them at Power Trip. And it was Cliff, uh, Cliff Williams' last gig ever with them. This was the first gig with Chris Cheney. And they have the uh, new drummer. So it's a full new rhythm section. It's basically Angus. It's the Angus Young Band. That's what it is. Um, and, you know, he is the last man standing from the original 1974 uh, incarnation of the band. And hats off to him, my man, out there. So I saw him at Power Trip, and I was like, you know, I'm good. This this is uh, wrapping it up. I saw him from 1978 to 20, what was that, 20, 2023 or 24, whenever Power Trip was. Can't even remember now. It just seems like it was about four months ago, but I'm sure it was in, uh, I don't know, I can look. Hold on. I'll just look because I'm fucking right here. Um, man, my fucking nose is t rashed. Let's see here. Um, yep, can't find it because I don't want to stall out this fucking show. Oh, wait a minute. Here, I got it. Found it. They played 2023. What month was that? Um, October 7th. Wow. Okay, so they played May 17th a few nights ago, and then they're going to play tomorrow night. And this is the tour that they've uh, started, the whole European tour. Once again, 24 songs in the set. It's pretty much the uh, the Power Trip set. They opened up with If You Want Blood, You Got It. And uh, I'm still fucking fully baffled by a 24-song set at their age is it is it a uh, ego thing they could easily do 18 songs i said it before and everybody would be totally happy but 24 songs is what they're doing and uh you know we'll see if that changes later into the tour with uh fatigue or uh brian or whatever now when i saw him at power trip it was fun and it was, uh, you know, amazing to see him back on after seven years, back on stage. Um, but a couple nights ago, I watched, and this fucking wiped the Power Trip show, just fucking wiped it with a mop, like, see you later. And as I watch it, uh, the, the Germany show, it it gave me all kinds of questions. Like, did they not rehearse enough for Power Trip? Could Brian not hear himself? Because all night he was fucking with his in-ears at the Power Trip. Was um, the band nervous? Was it the seven-year, uh, you know, in between live shows? Was that, I'm sure it was all of that. It had to be all of that because this show, you can watch it. It's all over YouTube. They fucking sound great. And uh, Brian, in particular, he's fucking, he was killing it. Not on all the songs, which also leads me to believe, cut out the songs that he's not killing it on. And uh, one of them would be Dog Eat Dog. It is absolute garbage when they play Dog Eat Dog. That's okay. Pick another one. Play Spellbound off of fucking, um, off of uh, For Those About to Rock. Play anything off of uh, Those About to Rock, Flick of the Switch. How about Who Made Who? That, that'd probably be a pretty easy song for Brian to sing. And a fucking smasher hit, a song a lot of people are going to want to hear. At this point, 
really pick the songs that Brian sounds great on because the rest of the band is fucking killing right now. So if you can fire up the perfect Brian Johnson set list, you are going to be blowing people's minds. It, it already kind of blew my mind. And the internet was fucking so positive over this show. They open up with If You Want Blood, like they did a power trip. And immediately I was like, oh my God, it's a totally different Brian. Now maybe Brian got sick, like me right now, the froggy. <laughs> maybe he got uh, sick before power trip or, or he couldn't hear himself or whatever. But it is pretty obvious that something was going on compared to the show a few nights ago. And I'll tell you what, watch the YouTube version of Riff Raff from the Germany show. It's fucking smoking. I mean, I'll post it up. It is fucking smoking. I was like, whoa, what the fuck? Hell's Bells sounded great. Once again, shout out. They got the tempo just fucking perfect. It's not fast. Hell's Bell's not fast. It's got that groove. And uh, they nailed the groove. Chris Cheney is fucking killing it. The backgrounds sound a thousand times better this show than they did at uh, Power Trip. The background vocals. Guitar tones. Now, somebody mentioned uh, he doesn't think, or he or she, I don't know if it was an internet, he, she, they, them, but uh, somebody mentioned that they think that they might be playing out of those fractals, the process computer stuff. I don't know. I kind of doubt it because uh, I know Angus is completely old school, obviously. That's why they don't run any background tapes or you know any of that um but the guitar tones were way better in germany also i felt at power trip they were just a little too clean so when angus was doing like thunderstruck he was flubbing it was like but at fucking Germany with the dirtier guitars, like it was perfect. And uh, Angus was just fucking killer. Came out in the green suit. He doesn't strip down anymore. They didn't play the jack. There's no more stripping. Old man uh, is not going to be doing the stripping, strip tease thing that he did for his whole career. His hat stayed on for about 90% of the show, which is very unusual. That would always be gone by the, the third song. And uh, he kept his shirt on to the whole show. Remember he used to unbutton it, fucking swing it around, put it between his legs. Then he would fucking hang bare ass to the, the crowd. Then years later, people were like, you shouldn't hang bare ass. So he'd drop his pants and it'd be like a, a flag, whatever country they were in, flag underwear. But uh, none of that anymore. He uh, he seemed to uh, really gravitate mostly towards the um, the back and black SG, the black one with the full white pick guard, my favorite guitar that Angus plays. Cheney was uh, killing it with the fucking black jeans. Uh, Converse, uh, Chuck Taylors. I always trip on people that wear Chuck Taylors, man. I just look at it and go, oh my God, your back and feet got to be hurting. And uh, it was great. It was great. They, they played uh, pretty much the Power Trip set list. I'm looking right now. Man, I don't know how I'm making it through this podcast. Hey, uh, for those about to rock. Ah. Anyway, holy shit, man. They sound great, and I'm looking forward to watching the clips from uh, tomorrow night and uh, see see what, what goes down, see if they change the set list, see if there's a shorter set 
or move songs in and out. I don't think they will, though. They're not a band that does that. They don't really change the set list. It's not a, a Grateful Dead style band. They lock it in. That's what they're playing. That's for the light cues and the pyro and everything. A lot of people complain, and, and I will agree on this. Same stage they've been using since, uh, what, 2000, whatever the, the tour was before Power Trip using the same stage, which is kind of a bummer. I always liked ACDC each year they would come. It would be something totally different, you know, from back in black, my favorite, just that simple Marshall stacks and a drum uh, set on the stage. And then the bell coming down. Then the following year, the cannons that came up, uh, all the way up to uh, Runaway Train, Black Ice Era, where they had the fucking train come out and crash. They've always had some really cool stage stuff. The Blow Up Rosie. The Blow Up's gone. It's all digital now. But holy shit, uh, you know, the fucking, the amount of tickets they've sold is incredible. And the people were going crazy. And really, that's what it's about. Everybody's still wondering are they going to do a U.S. tour? You know they're going to do a U.S. tour. There's no fucking way they're not. Um, Got to let them get through this one first. People are hitting me up. Should I just fly to Europe to see them? I don't know. Have you seen them before? If you have, just wait, you know? Uh, I saw Power Trip. That was my last ACDC show, and I feel good about it. Real good. If somebody that works for ACDC calls me and they come to town and say, come down as our guest, I will fucking be there. I will uh, honor their request. But that's not going to happen. So I'm glad that I got to see Cliff Williams' last gig. And much respect to the great Cliff Williams, as I said a while ago. Very cool. He's probably out fucking fishing somewhere right now. And just... uh you know, not getting his uh, hearing assaulted. <laughs> anyway, hoping to get Chris Cheney on the podcast. I reached out to him. I've known him uh, for years, a little bit. Grew up in Marin. He is a NorCal boy like myself. And uh, I really hope to get him on. Speaking of ACDC, um. My buddies AZDZ, Josh Z and Joey DeBono, they have that uh, Bon Scott era tribute band. Josh plays in my uh, my Bon Scott bash once a year. And they, if you live in uh, NorCal, San Fran, uh, Santa Rosa, Marin, Oakland, all around there, go check them out. They play all over. And Josh is, you know, probably one of the all time greatest. Angus Young's you'll ever see other than Angus. And uh, they've been doing it for, I don't know, uh, about a year or so. But Mr. Big was coming to San Francisco. They're on their farewell tour, Mr. Big. And farewell tour. <laughs> I just said fucking, uh, I have a hard time saying that for any band. It's funny. But uh uh, they're going to invent some new gimmick and it's going to take the place of the farewell and you're going to fall for that, whatever that is. But uh, Mr. Big was playing the Fillmore and they called up uh, a friend of ours and they said, hey, we need a good rock band to open for us at the Fillmore. And nobody could think of a good rock band in San Francisco. Like, uh, there's not really any which is strange. I'm sure there is, but they probably ask people that were in their fifties that don't go out anymore. Cause it's just absolutely impossible that there's no rock band in San Francisco, but AZDZ got uh, recommended and Eric Martin said, fuck yeah, let's do it. Had him on. They opened and killed, which is great. Fillmore opened for Mr. Big. Perfect opener, an ACDC cover band. You know, older fans, 
they're not down with hearing some band they never heard of. So to hear a band play ACDC, they're like, oh, this is fucking great. You know, getting it warmed up. Um, anyway, I saw some photos and footage and it looked great. And then I saw some Mr. Big and uh, Joey, my old bass player, talked to uh, Eric Martin. And he was like, hey, Eric Martin said, when was the last time you played the Fillmore? And he goes, oh, I used to play Dean Del Rey's band. I've only played here once and it was back then. He said, oh, Del Rey, I got to give him a ring. So we uh, chatted yesterday and I just fucking love Eric Martin. I had him on the podcast years ago. And I got to tell you, yesterday after I talked to him, we, uh, we were just texting back and forth. I broke out his record, Sucker for a Pretty Face, Eric Martin, and just listened to it two times in a row. I knew the lyrics fucking perfect all the way through the record. I knew the nuances of the vocals. I knew the arrangements. That thing is embedded in my brain like a fucking computer chip. I listened to that record for two years straight with a buddy of mine named Tootie. That was his uh, nickname. His name was Art. I don't know why uh, people called him Tootie. But he had a 64 Mustang. And he was a stereo installer. So he always had the fucking dopest stereo. You know, the old uh, Pioneer Super Tuner with the fucking EQ, graphic EQ in the glove box, some Jensen triaxles in the back and some tweeters in the door. You'd fucking cut your, your door panel on your 64 Mustang to put a speaker in, just ruining the originality of your fucking 64 Mustang. Put those speakers in, because 64 Mustangs and, 68 Camaros and 70 Dodge Super Bs. Those things in the Bay Area were fucking everywhere. They were a dime a dozen and they were like two grand. Just imagine parking lot at high school full of them. I've said it before, just full of these fucking cars. Anyway, we would pop that cassette player, uh, that tape into the cassette player and just fucking rock Eric Martin, man. I'll say it over and over. The Bay Area had its own fucking sound, a lot like Seattle grunge, L.A. fucking hair metal, uh, Detroit garage rock. Bloop, computer's fucking barking at me. Um, Bay Area had this this rock sound that's fucking, I don't think people talk about enough. And it's really incredible. 415, Eric Martin's uh, band before the Eric Martin band. Le Mans. Uh, Huey Lewis in the News. Journey. Santana. You know, these are uh, YNT. Uh, it, it, it was this this sound it was geared around songwriting big time really fucking geared around finely written crafted tunes they weren't pop tunes they were just these perfect rock tunes it wasn't metal and it wasn't you know ac dc hard rock ac or uh, ynt got as hard as i'm talking but these bands, really around Marin County, Uncle Charlie's, New George's, these were the clubs, really had this fucking sound, man. And as I went down the uh, the time machine playing the music yesterday, just the rabbit hole of it, I was just thinking, like, this fucking shit is good, man. I've said it before, but it just, it just hits me. It, it's not anything where I listen to it now and go, well, I was young and it was just, you know, that's because a lot of times you'll put something on and you'll be like, 
oh, I guess I was just in that. That was an era in my life when I was just partying and rocking to this. But no, man. These fucking records by these bands, uh, Huey Lewis, Journey, before, I'm talking before Journey, Super Giant. I'm talking about Infinity, you know, uh, Eric Martin. There's some other ones too. Uh, my brain is not working right now because I'm fucking sick. Anyway, looking forward to having Eric Martin back on. I had him on uh, probably about eight years ago. I was doing the punchline in San Francisco. He drove into the city like eight in the morning, knocked on my hotel door. Hey, man. There he was, Eric Martin. Always fucking looked up to that guy. You know, as much as I learned about singing from uh, Motown or metal or ACDC or Prince, I learned so much from uh, Eric Martin. Just phrasing, lyric writing, storytelling. Eddie Money. It's another fucker. Eddie Money. Just hit me. Bam. Eddie Money. Pablo Cruz. See, brain starting to work now. Morning time. Green tea's kicking in. Mm. Mm. Pablo Cruz. Yeah, uh, Starship. A lot of people don't like Starship. I only go the airplane, man. Starship. Fucking great. Speaking of Starship, uh, this has nothing to do with Starship, but it reminds me of hippies. Denco opened up at the Sphere this weekend, and I am telling you, you know I only got about four concerts left in me, but I'll see anyone other than Fish in the Sphere. Holy shit. The video, the, the stuff that they're showing for the uh, Denco, oh my God. Look, I cannot stress to you enough how dope the Sphere is. Sphere! Um, you know, I never got to see the dead and, uh, I, you know, I could see the dead, but I was just like, no, didn't like them. But now I'm so in love with them and the, uh, you know, the history of it. So during the show, they're showing these incredible, they're turning the sphere into like Cornell university. Like the whole venue, the video looks like you're in that fucking Cornell University, that that hall. Then another song, they build the fucking wall of sound, which I absolutely worship and had that guy on that built the mini wall of sound on the podcast. But they built the wall of sound on the videos. Just this shit is fucking insane. The show opens up. You're on Hate Street in front of their goddamn Hate Street house. Man, I'm telling you, we are just tapping the fucking beginnings of the sphere. Man, I hope I can make it through this podcast. Let's see. How long have I been on? It is It is getting rough. <laughs> it's getting worse and worse. Let me get a... Oblas Lozenger here. I'm getting through this because I don't miss episodes other than when my mom mom passed away. Rest in peace, mom. I miss you. Uh, let me get another one of these motherfuckers. Let me see if I can get finish this out. Anyway, the sphere. Unreal, buddies. Unreal. Oh, I missed something. Now, the Pretty Reckless is opening for ACDC, and there has not been one fucking mention of them, which is interesting, man. Not, not one fucking mention. Okay, back to the show. So I'm going to the Sphere on July 4th to see Denko, and I cannot wait to just be engulfed in that video. It's just incredible. And now it's making me kind of bummed I'm not going the whole weekend, but it's like fucking $5,000. If you want to go whole weekend, not, not the tickets, but just hotels, food, fucking, 
you know, life. Life is crazy money. <laughs> that's, that's a good bumper sticker. Life is crazy money. All right, man. Let's see. I think what I'll do is I'll talk about this last stuff and then uh, I'll get out of here, man, because I'm fucking trashed. But definitely go uh, check out ACDC on, uh, and Dead & Co. on YouTube. New Patreoners. Oh, big love for you. Thank you. Ashley Tice. Thank you. Chris uh, Strebig. Todd Simpson. Logan Roadford and Corey uh, Iverson. Let me make sure I'm not missing anybody because I really fucking appreciate this. There are 158 bonus episodes up right now on the uh, Patreon. My friends, get, get down on that. Here we go. Oh, my God. The Ataris have joined the Patreon. That band, the Ataris. Fuck yeah. Great band. And uh, let's see. Oh, we lost one. Jonathan Bell. Bummer. Thanks for uh, supporting, Jonathan. I get it. And, oh, Hero Jr. Yep, they had to step out. His father's not feeling well. He gave me a little email. Thank you, though, for the support. Atari's in the guy. This guy, whoever it is from the Atari's been hitting me up. Just fucking kind soul. Oh, also, like, uh, um, Last week's episode. I hope you guys fucking enjoyed that. Uh, you know, we uh, we got we got into it, man, with the new music. I just love fucking promoting the new music. And uh, Robert John really was a great soul. And I've been listening to their music quite a bit this week, which is killer. Um, okay. So those are the Patreoners. There's 158 bonus episodes. I just put one up talking about Francis Ford Coppola's new movie and um, Steve Albini, rest in peace, talked about Steve Albini. And also I want to uh, give a, a quick love out to Bill Paxton, rest in peace. Good friend. It was his birthday. It would have been his birthday a few days ago. We lost him uh, years back. And I still think about him all the time, man. The guy, he was, he reminded me a lot of me, man. When he was somewhere, he was like, you know, like Damone, who I, uh, I talked about. Uh, I just was hanging with Damone. But remember that scene in Fast Times? I feel like I'm name dropping here. Yeah, and then I was, uh, you know, then I saw Sean Penn. You know, I've been pretty much hanging out with the Fast Times crew, you know, because I'm fucking, I'm fucking cool. <laughs> anyway. Damone, remember, just wherever you're at, Brad, you know, just act like it's the greatest. Like, isn't this fantastic? <laughs> All right. Uh, yesterday, I went to go to my favorite taco place. Sick. Got to get some food, get some fucking hot sauce, try to sweat it out. And I go, the line's too long. I got Gertie, it's warm out. I don't mind waiting in a line. I'm not one of those people. I don't wait in lines. Fuck that. I wait in line because most of the time it's because it's good. Now, if you're waiting in line and it's just because you want to be seen or it's some fucking thing, that's bullshit. But man, the good stuff is usually uh, a line. My favorite coffee place, a line. It's just what it is. I don't fucking feel lines ever. I stare at my phone like a goddamn zombie. And next thing you know, the guy's going next. And I'm fucking staring at my phone and the person bumps me like, that's you. 20 minutes has gone by. What's the big fucking deal? Look at your phone like you always do. You won't even know you're in line. Anyway, but I had Gertie. It was hot. And uh, I don't like Gertie in the sun for a long time. Gertrude. So... I'm leaving there and I see this other place in Highland Park and somebody goes, oh man, they, they got good burritos in there. So we pull over and we stop and we try it. I'll try some, I'll try some shit out. You know, I'll take some chances. I'm not afraid. <laughs> so we go in there and they served burritos in the most genius way I've ever seen. Instead of the, you know, the standard burrito now is fucking 
thicker than your goddamn neck. You know, you're eating it. It bursts apart. It squirts all over your fucking nice hoodie. These guys gave you two burritos for nine bucks and they were skinny and about, I'd say about eight inches long. And you got two. And I went, these motherfuckers have changed the game. Because no more giant fucking squirt all over you, bust open, way too fucking big, shouldn't be eating this diabetic fucking tummy bomb. They just gave you two nice, tight wrapped, slim, proper little mini burritos. You ate them. Your hands were still clean. I don't like dirty hands or dirty shoes. Oh, I hate mud on my shoes. Makes me fucking crazy. You know, this is uh, no scuff Dean. So anyway, uh, these two skinny burritos. Perfect. Shout out to them. I can't fucking remember the name of the place because I was sick and forgot to get a picture. But I'll get it for you guys. But they changed the game. It's two skinny burritos in 2024. Vote for that. <laughs> All right, I got to get the fuck out. Uh, hope to see you out on the road. I got uh, tour dates, deandelray.com, patreon.com slash deandelray to join for the bonus episodes. Coming up is uh, Denver, two nights at the Belco Arena, Berkeley Greek Theater, four nights at the San Jose Civic, I'll be headlining at uh, Acme in um, in Minneapolis. And uh, this just got added in. Hold on. Let me get this for you. Um, Springfield, Missouri. Blue Room is going to be uh, August 30, 31. There you go. Out there in fucking Missouri in August. That's going to be nice and uh fucking wet balls and uh, swamp ass sleep in the hotel the whole time. I don't know. Bugs, mesquites. Got to be some mosquitoes out there, Dean. You better watch out. You get your ass out there in Missouri in the fucking August. You don't even fucking know what heat is till you've been in Missouri in August. Tell you right now, you fucking better leave your fancy fucking leather jackets home and uh, be one of those New York comics and finally wear shorts on stage because you're going to fucking fry out here, buddy, in your libertard fucking underwear. <laughs> so that's happening. And uh, Vegas, the Comedy Cellar, residency, July 8th through the uh, 14th. So I love all you guys. I cannot thank you enough for supporting the show. Keep the candles lit and uh, look for some great guests coming up. Marty Friedman's coming. Um, let's see, who else? We got some guests coming up. So, all right. I love you. Candles lit.